In this series of videos, we're going to talk about adjusting journal entries. If you're looking for just basic, straightforward journal entries, you come to the wrong place. These are more complicated than just your normal run-of-the-mill transactions. If you want to know about basic journal entries, I recommend watching one of my earlier videos. I'm going to try to make a link kind of pop up right now, and you can click on that link. But if you're here for adjusting journal entries, well, you've come to the right place. This video, we'll talk about prepaid expenses. In the next video, we'll talk about amortization and depreciation. In the following video, we're going to talk about accrued expenses, then accrued revenues, and finally, unearned revenues. Uh, I'll make a final wrap-up video discussing all five and kind of just an overall picture about what adjusting journal entries are. I'm going to try to explain them as I go here, but the best way, in my opinion, to understand anything in accounting is to actually practice it and do it yourself. So I'll be demoing problems here, but it's my strongest recommendation that you seek out your professor, your textbook, wherever you can, and you practice these journal entries on your own. This will be provide a nice framework for the basics of it, but this stuff is best learned by doing it on your own. Okay, so let's work through this prepaid expenses problem. And again, I'll try to explain a bit about prepaid expenses uh, as we're working on it. So before I get started, I, I think it is important that I explain what a prepaid expense is. And you can probably just read the two words and get a feel for it, right? A prepaid means, well, you pay for an advance expense costs, right? So it's a cost that I pay for in advance. Now here's the problem I have with the terminology, prepaid expense. Prepaid expenses are not expenses at all. Prepaid expenses are assets. And let me give you, uh, well, there's a few common examples of prepaid expenses. Uh, one is like prepaid rent. We pay for our rent before we use it. I have to pay for rent at the beginning of the month, not at the end. Another really common example of a prepaid expense that you're going to see all the time in, in accounting in real life and accounting in textbooks is prepaid insurance. Uh, it's a cost that you pay. Uh, and, and you don't get to pay for insurance after the year's over. That wouldn't make any sense. You pay for insurance in advance. And so almost all companies have insurance policies of some sort. And so almost all companies have to deal with this prepaid insurance cost. So here's why uh, prepaids are an asset. Let's say I buy an insurance policy on January 1st for a thousand bucks or whatever. I see this question is twelve hundred. Doesn't matter. Uh, and a few days later I decide, you know what, I'm going to sell my car, don't need a car anymore, I don't need car insurance anymore. So I get rid of my car on January 5th. Well, my next move after I get rid of my car should be to go to my insurer and say, hey, cancel my insurance, I want a bunch of my money back. Well, that being the case, that's an indicator that that insurance wasn't really an expense. Expenses are stuff that's kind of used up. But if I can get my money back from the insurance, well, that's an indicator that maybe it's something different. Maybe it's something that had a future economic benefit for me. And if you look back to our very first video, when we defined what is an asset, we said it's something that has a future economic benefit. So because of that, any cost that you pay for in advance is actually classified not as an expense, but as an asset. Once we've used up, some of our insurance, once some of our insurance has expired, that's when we've got ourselves an expense. All right, I think I've explained it, maybe you know not the best, but I, I think you have a feel for it now. Let's work through this problem. XYZ Company buys a $1,200 insurance policy on January 1st, 2012. The insurance policy is for a 12-month period. The company is an April 30th year end and asks us to record the entry on January 1st, April 30th, and then give an updated account for prepaid insurance on April 30th. Okay, well, let's get started with January 1st. So A, we're going to do January 1st. And on January 1st, that's just that first sentence of the question, XYZ Company buys a $1,200 insurance policy on January 1st. Okay, so we bought an insurance policy. I'm going to assume for cash. So if we buy something for cash, cash is an asset going down. Again, looking back to basic journal entries, we know to credit cash. It doesn't say we bought it for cash, but I'm going to make that assumption. If you put accounts payable here on one of my tests, I'd mark you right because the question was not specific enough. All right, so we bought $1,200 worth of insurance and we used $1,200 of cash. Now what's our debit here? Uh, 
you know, a, a decent wrong answer would be to say insurance expense, right? We bought some insurance. That's a cost of doing business, insurance expense. But after the spiel I've just given you, you know it's not an expense. So here's what we're going to call it. We bought insurance. We paid for it in advance. We're going to call it prepaid insurance. And we're going to debit that account for $1,200. Now, the, the topic of the day today is adjusting journal entries. What we've just done is not an adjusting journal entry. This is a simple transaction. We're debiting an asset. We're paying cash for it. Nothing crazy yet. Our next journal entry is our adjustment. So on April 30th, what we need to do is we need to look at our insurance. Now we've said on January 1st, I have a $1,200 asset. I have a $1,200 worth of insurance. On April 30th, that's our fiscal year end, we're going to prepare financial statements, we're going to tax returns, all that good stuff. Um, we've got to tell our shareholders where we're at. And one of the things we've got to say is how much insurance we have. So do I have $1,200 of insurance on April the 30th? The answer is no, right? If I bought $1,200 worth of insurance on January 1st, some of it has expired by April 30th. Some of it has run out. How much insurance has run out exactly? Well, January, February, March, April are all done. Those That four months of insurance is burned up. You know, it's, it's gone and it's not coming back. Well, because it's gone and it's not coming back, that makes it an expense. When we can just, you know, get more money back for our insurance or we still have a future benefit from our insurance, it's still an asset. But those four months that have elapsed, that means it's an expense. So let's go ahead on April 30th and figure out how much of this insurance to expense. I'm going to do it just on the side here. Actually, maybe not. I know my picture is there and sometimes I write underneath my picture. So we bought a 12 hundred dollar insurance policy that was supposed to last us 12 months that means our insurance is going to expire at a rate of a hundred dollars per month and we've gone from January February March April we've used four months of insurance so four months of insurance at a hundred bucks means we've used four hundred dollars worth of insurance We've used it up. It's expired. We need to expense it. We need to say this is a cost. So we're going to debit insurance expense. We always debit expenses now. Remember that. And again, the date's April 30th. I was going to date it again, but there's the date there for 400 bucks. And we're going to credit, and I hope you've guessed it, prepaid insurance. We wanted to say our prepaid insurance was $1,200. We had a $1,200 asset. That asset needs to be reduced by $400. So let's credit our prepaid insurance. All right. So we've got a good journal entry. Debit insurance expense, credit prepaid insurance. Now here's what makes this interesting and here's what makes this an adjustment. Most transactions are triggered by something like you go to the store, you pay a bill, so your cash goes down. There's like a paper trail, there's the bill, there's the invoice. There's a, a paper trail associated with this. But on April 30th, there's no paper trail between my insurance company and me. My insurance company doesn't call me up and say, hey, I know it's your fiscal year end. Uh, your insurance is four months older. Just wanted to remind you. That doesn't happen, right? My insurer's not going to get in touch with me until close to the January 1st of the next year, right? They're going to say, oh, it's time to renew your insurance. They, they don't care on April 30th. They've got their money for the year. They're just happy I haven't called them with a claim. So on April 30th, there's no real transaction. What we're doing is an adjustment. We're adjusting our prepaid insurance account to where it should be. That's why we call it an adjusting journal entry. But that's also what makes it challenging compared to a normal journal entry. Again, normal journal entries will just have a paper trail coming from outside. You just process a transaction and, and it's easier. This is an unusual journal entry. Um, and again, it's not triggered by anything external. It's triggered by our fiscal year end. Once you've done a lot of accounting, you'll see that we review our insurance and we figure out how much is prepaid at year end. That's just a standard operating procedure. But when you're just learning accounting, it can be a tricky concept. I hope I've explained it well.
Uh, let's just wrap this problem up by doing part C. C says, set up and show the T account for prepaid insurance. It has an opening balance of zero. Uh, what's the balance on April 30th? Basically, they're saying, how much insurance do we have left on April 30th? We can do this a lot of ways, but I'll, I'll do it the way they've suggested. So here's a T account for prepaid insurance. Again, a T account is just a T with the uh, name of the account on top. Uh, it said it started with a zero balance, so zero. I put it on the debit side because prepaid insurance is an asset. Assets take a debit balance. I've debited the prepaid insurance account for 1200 bucks, and I did that in the first journal entry. You can see prepaid insurance, debit 1200 So debits go on the left, credits go on the right, just like our journal entries. So there's a debit of 1200 Then a credit of 400 to prepaid insurance on uh, my April 30th transaction. Uh, I take the total of the, the big side, which is the left in this case, the debit side, 1200 minus the total of the smaller side, in this case the credit side, so 1200 minus 400, and the big side gets the balance. If they were everything was on the left, I would just add it all up. If everything was on the right, I would just add it all up. But since I've got debits and credits, I take the bigger side minus the smaller side, the big side gets the balance. Anyway, my prepaid insurance balance is 800 bucks, but probably or possibly you already knew that. Uh, and the reason you should have already known that is you should say to yourself, okay, well, I had 1200 bucks worth of insurance. I used up 400 I used up four months. How much do I have left? Well, I had 1200 I used up 400 I have 800 left. I mean, I can do that just kind of intuitively in my head. You could also count the months left. You could say, well, I've got May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I have eight months left. Notice I didn't count April because on the 30th, April's over. Uh, I have eight months left. My insurance is a hundred bucks a month. I have eight hundred dollars worth of insurance left on the table. So that's what that last bit was getting at. We can do it with T account. You can just do it in your head. We have eight hundred dollars of insurance left over, and uh, that'll get used up by year end. That'll expire by year end. I hope uh, you understand prepaids a little bit better. In our next video, we're going to discuss amortization and depreciation of long-term capital assets.